in between Wednesdays. Just trying to get by to the next fix, living between Wednesdays. Prefer the comics over the Netflix. Living between My research I've done on you, you actually have quite a few books out. So you've mm -hmm. obviously got Gehenna Death Valley. Mm -hmm. um, you've got, uh, do forgive me, um, I have it written here, The Wormhole Club Tragedy. Yes. Um, you also have a book that you have prints of that people can buy called Beholden. Um, and then yes. further, uh, as we talked about earlier, you have Dracula Visions. Mm -hmm. um, so we've touched on Wormhole Club Tragedy just now, Dracula mm -hmm. Visions, which sounds super cool. Mm -hmm. We've touched on. Um, can you tell us about um, Beholden? Yeah. So um, for now, we just have ash cans for it. And um, yeah, so basically it's a supernatural horror, question mark, but horror light you know, you all. So the original concept came from Bob Sally, who's best known for uh, titles like Broken Gargoyles and Ogre and Ogres that he worked with Sean Daly, another Toronto artist. And uh, Bob's based in Boston. And um, he came up with this idea of basically a novice agent working with the cleaning lady at the museum and they're fighting a succubus or demons. And I'm like, ooh, sign me up. So our pitch is like, it's like supernatural, like the show is supernatural meets yeah. die hard. So it's, it's a pitch that's working so far. Like I have to, this light up speech bubble sign with that uh, supernatural meets die hard. And people are like, Ooh, I like those things. So and they just want to buy it. So yeah. Um, I can't wait for it to come out. So it's, um, the initial plan for it is supposed to be like a four issue mini series and okay just go from there but yeah the team behind it is great so i got as i said bob sally drina joe and uh cardinal ray for letters and yeah um hopefully it will come out very soon beyond the ash can um it was one of the projects we were working on like before the pandemic happened and then since the pandemic like everything's just kind of disorganized <laughs> within the the well every industry is affected by it like i unless you're like lysol or something i don't know <laughs> those guys are killing it Oh yeah, they so, they've got to do know. very well for themselves. Yeah, and Purell, whoever makes those hand gels, like you know, business is booming. But oh, yeah. yeah, no, but I mean, I I think that's a, a great description, and I'm gonna uh, have an image come up um, somewhere here um, of the the cover because um, mm -hmm. it definitely feels like, well, like you said, Supernatural meets Die Hard is the perfect way to describe it. Yeah. Um, especially for those out there who've watched Supernatural, it I feel mm -hmm. like the characters in in your in um beholden are older though correct than sam and dean from supernatural i would say um the main character well one of the protagonists uh devin devin mclean who is around their ages where there's the older character lupe is grandma age so it's an odd parent so it's like a buddy <laughs> cop thing but with with the agent with the cleaning lady you know on okay, odd coupling so that... but yeah. Oh, okay, so that got caught. That that part get kept, gets kept. Okay, that sounds yeah. really cool. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Uh, so one thing I did want to ask. So obviously you you've written comics, you've drawn comics. Um, so I have a series of questions in it. I'm gonna try and make sure I don't ask them all at once because I have a bad habit of doing that. That's okay. Um, so okay. outside of your own works, um, I understand mm -hmm. that you've worked as a color flatter. Mm -hmm. Um, now. For those out there who don't know and, and maybe just enjoy comics from a purely reader perspective, um, when it comes to comics, you have a writer who actually writes the script and, and comes mm -hmm. up with the written idea. You have an artist slash illustrator who actually draws it. If it really breaks down, you can have an inker who then inks the lines and then a mm -hmm. colorist who colors them. Mm -hmm. And even for myself, um, that's sort of where my concept of it outside of a letter and an editor ended. Mm -hmm. um, You've worked as a color flatter on quite a few projects, actually. Yeah. Um, to my, what I've read, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, what a color flatter does is go through a comic and sort of highlight objects and characters within the panel. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like I'd be working on a program like Photoshop and just select something with either the wand tool or the lasso tool or just paint it on, whichever. But everything has to have a crisp clean line so if i were to paint it i'd be using the pencil tool for those of you who are aware of photoshop like like you cannot have any gaps or missing pixels it's it's kind of like a coloring bug vibe if you will that's the best way i can describe it for people who 
aren't aware of color flooding, but yeah. So basically it's, um, you're basically a coloring assistant, if you will. Okay. Um, yeah. And then you send it back to the artist or colors and then they do whatever, make it look better <laughs> and not the rendering and whatnot to the, the piece. Because like, I would say like that process, it takes a while ish to select all the pieces depending on the line work of the piece like i yeah. prefer to work with chunky thick ink lines because it's easier and faster to work that way as opposed to like super skinny lines and you have to be so delicate and careful and make sure the colors are not outside the the line work okay. if you will but yeah and the thing with color flatting though it's i mean like you get paid for it but it's also you kind of feel like you're an intern in a way if mm -hmm. that makes sense so yeah, so that was how I got my foot in the door for comics. And oh. yeah, so I did that. And when I wasn't flatting, I would be working on my stuff. So also, again, what's nice about the Schuster win is that I've been getting more uh, work that's not color flatting, but just professional illustration work and comics work. So awesome. yeah, awesome. and well, thank you. And well, uh, with the Beholden, though, that happened before that win happened winning the Schuster happened but yeah but it's been, it's doubled since then oh um, sweet since the Schuster okay. so yeah yeah very busy with that <laughs> I mean that's, that's yeah that, that's a good problem to have right it's a really good problem and then the other thing with color flatting is like you're not always credited as a flatter and that that's why I use the intern comparison yeah like I, I'm not gonna like me personally having you know, I, I started reading and collecting comics like floppies, mm -hmm. um, 2011 with new 52. And I've mm -hmm. literally never come across the term until I started looking into yourself. That's kind um, of partly why, because it's yeah, not many. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like to me, that's wild. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the, it, to me, it almost seems like a, a flatter is in the rank of like what's believed to be important for creating a comic mm -hmm. sort of under a letter even. And I think yeah. that's odd. Cause like when I've done work and research into it, cause I just got really interested in it. Um, it seems like it also helps with the, the printing process as well. Yeah, I, I guess it does. Um, I never even thought of it like that before, but it's, um, but yeah, it's just a lot of selections and a lot of just filling in, if you will. Um, but like the colors that you pick as a color flyer don't always stay the same unless that the artist or colorist specifically requests a certain palette. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, but um, anyway, so in the industry, so people like Chip Starsky, who's been awesome, by the way, um, he did credit me. He's one of the few people, for example, who's credited me as a flatter or a coloring assistant, which is mm -hmm. awfully kind of him. So Chip, thank you for that, um, for that acknowledgement. But yeah, yeah, this is also, I'm super happy to be doing more drawing uh, comics and illustration work at this point, because that was the goal. But, yeah. you know, I was more like anything to get my foot in the door kind of thing. Um, yeah. No, that, that's beautiful. Now, one thing mm -hmm. I, I, I'm curious about is because you've done that, because um, you've done flatting for a fair number of books. As I understand it, you actually did Sex Crims, which is one of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. um, do you flat your books or do you just go right in and color them when you're the artist on it? Um, again, that process is somewhat evolving. So I think with Wormhole Club, I'm just debating whether I do the flats or start it with flats or if I just start painting it on Procreate. Because like I'm finding more and more I prefer painting stuff, if you will, and just layering it that, like that. Um, I feel it feels more comfortable and more natural that way. Um, um coloring like that like it's just the flats it just feels so mechanical and very oh uh, i don't know i what's the right word for it uncreative maybe yes yes um it does feel like that you know where i feel like the painting it's okay i can feel my soul again all right cool <laughs> you know fair enough yeah yeah and for a wormhole club i have specific a color palette in mind for it and i just I don't want to do what I did for Gehenna. Like, I don't want to do the same thing twice. So I just, whatever I can do differently, sure, I'll go for it. <laughs> Love it. And, and again, it, it speaks to your your evolution. I, I absolutely am fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I want to make sure I've, I've got this right. So for the folks out there at home, one, now, um, 
do you still have copies of Gehenna Death Valley available? Like if someone were to go into an online store, purchase it? Nope. Um, oh. so from Fan Expo, all the first editions are sold out. So oh, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So uh, for now, I just have a pre-order link on my website at thebackup.com. Um, on the sidebar, you can see the pre-order link for uh, the second edition or Gehenna Death Valley or the um, deluxe edition for Gehenna Death Valley. Um, so um, right now, the uh, print files are almost, almost organized. It's just a couple of things we're waiting for. Um, but yeah, I have. So at the latest, it should be January when books should be shipped out and when I should have the books physically for whatever next show I'll be doing in 2022. So Beautiful. Yeah. And do you have digital copies available or is it purely physical? Um, I Most of the pages are on my website too. So everything except for the last 12 pages, you can read that. Oh, for just free. freely read them. Yeah, yeah. But um, from the Kickstarter for backers, I do have a digital edition mm -hmm. there. And there are differences between the website version and the book and soon to be PDF version of it. So, yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, um, I, I had a horrific discovery that, um, oh. sorry, mom, that my mom started reading Ganana and I was like, Oh no! So I censored some things, <laughs> so she wouldn't think um, there was anything wrong with her offspring. So, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um... Yeah. <laughs> but then she's like, "Oh, I know how you would think. It's okay. You're, you're fine." <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's so good to hear. Like, because yeah. what you've mentioned a fairly conservative household where you grew up. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good to hear your 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 mom you know, picked up your book and started checking it out. Well, no, the website, she read it on the website. So oh, that's, okay. yeah. So some of the gorier stuff that it's in the books, but I, I toned it down a bit and some of the swearing a little bit on the web version. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, yeah. It's good to hear that you, you've got their support at least or your mom's support. Yes. Um, although that is so funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Her reaction compared to like starting comics and then the Schuster win, she's like, oh, you know, it's like a whole 360. And she's like, okay, this is good. I let you do this. All right. <laughs> you know, it's, well, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess, it, it, and this is a time and time again, you hear about this where, you know, someone's child says, oh, I want to be an artist. And they're always like, ah, oh, oh no, it's just going to be horrible. You're not going to make any money. You're, you're going to be Exactly that. Yes. Yes. And, thanks to your work you can say here here's the proof in the pudding i've done it i've mm -hmm. literally awarded from some of the biggest awards you can get mm -hmm. you know ta-da that's yeah <laughs> yeah thank you it's again it, and also feels good like from fan expo and so the schedule mania panels that appeared on youtube that i could just send her the link and like hey here's what you missed <laughs> you know right there <laughs> That is fantastic. So, yeah. Becca, it absolutely sounds like you're, you're, from here, it's just everything going up. That's awesome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I I don't want to set, let's see, like everything's great. I, I'm still going to take the same approach as I did it from the beginning. Just go with the flow and not set crazy high expectations for myself, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to stifle myself or the creativity it sounds completely pretentious how i'm saying it but you know what i mean just continue to have fun with it like yeah. i just don't want to have this oh i have this award and i need to kick it up a few notches it's like no 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 no. just still i still want to be like be myself have the artwork speak for itself and whatever if anyone makes a connection with it great and people still keep buying books great the the award is just the icing on the cake it, it, and yeah and while with that said i am super happy and thankful to have that schuster but at the same time i don't want it to be like the defining um what's the word i just don't want it to be like like i said like that expectation i have to get ah uh, yes you know like i said because then that would it would just be a huge pressure yeah. Maybe there. I mean, and if things happen beyond the Schusters, that would be awesome too. But at the same time, I'm just happy to be drawing. Like I just that's all I want to do, really. Just keep drawing yeah. comics and keep making art. 
you know, people still, like I said, if people still keep buying, great. It's done. I mean, it's your style and your work mm -hmm. method and, and workflow that got you there. So yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, for your, your other work you mentioned, so next you're coming, the Wormhole Club Tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, when is it that folks can get in on it or will be able to get a copy? I'm hoping to have an actual physical copy, at least issue one, by the Toronto Comic-Con time frame. Um, I know that's, I haven't even announced if I'm going to be there yet. I'm, I'm, I will be filling out that application as soon as it goes out, like the professional application. That goes Once out it's available. Comic -Con. To... Once it's available, yes. Um, so stay tuned for that on my socials. Um, but yeah, definitely 2022 is when people Love will start it. seeing wormhole in the physical form so perfect yeah um, in in dracula visions um mm -hmm. i appreciate like you said you you got a quote uh mm -hmm. from bram stoker's dracula you yeah. created an art piece based on it that is currently at raid which is super cool yeah. um and that will become a book as well that someone can go and pick up yep. is that correct or some sort of collected edition yep uh, the book is fully funded they just crossed uh 12k recently so they overfunded too with their kickstarter um as of this well once this goes on youtube um it will the campaign will already be over but um if there's a pre-order link or anything i'll post that too like when it comes out but yes there will be physical copies of the book love it so it looks like everyone's gonna be able to get their hands on your work which is amazing yeah um then truth be told, uh, Becca, I think you've run the gamut of all the questions I have for you. All um, right, awesome. Yeah, I, I do always like to finish uh, my interviews with the same two questions. So uh, firstly, um, what is it that you're reading at the moment? Okay, so I just bought this book not too long ago. Like it was, so I don't normally like to go shopping at malls or whatever, but I do like to go to chapters <laughs> slash indigo. And I love their manga section and I, I saw it it spoke to me. I couldn't put it down. And again, this is such a predictable answer for people who but Junji Ito. Okay. Mm -hmm. Love his work. So I got censor. Look at that. That looks so good. And so pretty. Oh man. Wow. And I already read it. Like, and uh, the dust cover feels so nice. It's kind of, it's not, it's not plush, but it feels plushy. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. It's, and it's soft. Like, it feels soft. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. And then this is what it looks like without the dust cover. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah. And the, mm. for that, you book nerds out there, like, oh, uh, yeah. That's a beautiful I, book. Yeah. I upset one of my friends because I told him, like, hey, I got this book. He's like, oh, I can't get that free for Christmas right now. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why are you buying me? Whatever. But, oh, and I forgot. Uh, so inside the dust cover, mm -hmm. look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? I could not let the, I could not not buy it. So here we are. That That is stunning. Like it, it's, again, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of books. Obviously comics. Yeah. But a fair bit of like, I don't even know the word to use to distinguish them, but like regular fiction books and fantasy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. And I absolutely love always getting the dust cover on a hardcover because it's always got this typically beautiful art. And I, one of the letdowns is, yeah, when you open it up and the, the book itself is boring and it's just like a color and maybe the you know author's name on the side. Mm -hmm. um, so to see that level of like art and detail and love put into the book, that's an amazing looking book. And it's, if nothing else, it's gorgeous on your shelf. I'm assuming yeah. it's quite a good read. It's quite a good read. I, I already read it i'm gonna read it read it again and i i absolutely love it of course it's Jinji ito but whatever um yeah so that's what i currently reading have read etc <laughs> <laughs> love it yeah. um and then yeah so my my last question as always um what is it that you want your fans out there to know um so we're approaching the holiday season so um to everyone like make sure you support local artists small businesses um share their content online like any support is great um yeah that's the last thing i can think of but yeah um and also like no i think that's everything 
that's everything I can think of <laughs> for, for now. I love it. No, that's yeah. perfect. Thank you. Um, <laughs> folks out there in YouTube land, there will be links down below. Mm -hmm. um, but Becca, the Becca, mm -hmm. absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show, talk about Gehenna Death Valley, as well as your upcoming work, which is mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and again, congratulations on the award. Thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. It's, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Awesome. Well, you are most welcome. Um, and yeah, folks out there in YouTube land, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Again, hit up all the links down below to get all of the books that you can. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'll see you next time. Golden age to present, digest to oversize, never miss new comic day. Yeah, no surprise, so where's my no prize? Check the letter columns, can't find issue two. Yeah. Collector problems, cliffhangers, mysteries, you need answers. When did Batman become Green Lantern? I get it, true believer, not lying, always up for an awesome summer crossover time.